Joining me here in Washington is Saeed Khan. He's a lecturer in Near East and Asian Studies at Wayne State University in Indiana. And Saeed, I really want to delve into this issue of peacekeeping, especially UN peacekeeping. You got to wonder after watching that piece, I mean, how effective are UN's peacekeeping operations? Clearly, there are places around the world, Mali, DR Congo, they don't want the blue helmets there. But there are also places like Liberia, where the UN peacekeeping mission has been successful. So is there a simple answer, I guess, whether blue helmets are effective or not? Well, the world is not a simple place. And I think you're absolutely right that there are places uh, that unfortunately are not working cr uh, currently. I mean, here we find, for example, uh, President uh, Shilombo in the DRC uh, calling for the troops uh, to leave. Uh, in, in an act of pragmatism, I think he realizes that uh, the mission uh, has not been successful. And uh, as a result of it, uh, perhaps not wanting to subject uh, the troops uh, who are there on a peacekeeping mission to further jeopardy and uh, and risk. But as you said, there are places like uh, Kosovo. Uh, there are places uh, in uh, like Liberia, uh, even Cote d'Ivoire, if you will, and others, uh, including uh, India, Pakistan, which is always a hot spot, where we have to consider that the tensions and the conflicts could be far higher were it not for the presence of uh, UN peacekeeping forces. So again, uh, it would be wrong to take a look at this uh, as an aggregate. We do really need to see this on a case-by-case -case basis. So what about China's uh, peacekeeping mission? Um, China is the largest troop contributor to peacekeeping, peacekeeping operations among the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. Uh, they're very proud of that effort. Uh, has their contributions been mostly successful? They have. I mean, and as you rightly say, the China's uh, contribution is actually greater than the entire uh, UN Security Council combined or the, the other members. And I would actually uh, suggest that part of the reason is that the conflicts uh, to which uh, peacekeeping missions have to be deployed are oftentimes the legacy of the Cold War and the era of colonialism, uh, where some of these other countries have uh, been involved in creating, uh, certainly in some cases a few centuries ago, but certainly the legacy of which we, uh, they're living. Uh, for that reason, the kind of reputational issues, the kind of credibility issues, creates the suspicion, the cynicism that uh, many on the ground are feeling, uh, as you mentioned, in the case of Mali. China does not have uh, that colonial legacy. It does not have the kind of geopolitical blemish on it. And as a result of it, it seems as though, along with that, uh, its uh, dealings with countries, uh, not looking at regime changes, not looking at manipulating governments or the tectonic plates on the ground and trying to exploit that, that plays a very big role in China being able to come in and use its leverage uh, and use its goodwill for uh, bringing about some positive change. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Said Khan, thank you.